Hello everyone and welcome to the Sustainable Tourism Toolkit webinar series. My name is Nick Cooper from the Tourism Collective and we are delivering this webinar on behalf of the Australian Government. The Sustainable Tourism Toolkit is a how-to guide to help Australian tourism businesses become more sustainable. This is webinar one of a four-part webinar series and we're going to be sharing practical inspiration and case studies that bring to life the pillars of the toolkit for tourism businesses of all sizes. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians on the land that I'm speaking from today. I'm based on the Mornington Peninsula and I acknowledge the Bunurong Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to elders past and present and extend those respects to the First Nations countries and people that you are joining this call from today and acknowledge that they have cared for the waters and land we now call Australia for millennia. Just a few uh, logistics before we continue going any further. My colleague Brooke is um, behind the scenes on the call as well, um, managing uh, the chat and the questions that are coming through. This webinar is going to be uh, recorded um, and any questions that you may have, there is a questions box that you can add to those questions in. And um, between Brooke and then myself towards the end of the webinar, we'll do our best to um, answer them as we go through as well. I'm gonna um, turn off my um, camera now and so you can concentrate on the slides as we go through. And I'll tell you a little bit more about myself and uh, a bit more information as we go through. So um, I'll turn my camera off so you can concentrate a, a bit more on that. So my name's Nick Cooper. Uh, I'm the Regenerative Tourism Specialist at the Tourism Collective. The Tourism Collective are a small um, tourism consultancy um, and our, we work with destinations and operators around Australia. Our approach is underpinned by an understanding that tourism can and should be deliver a positive impact across local communities and people, local economies, the environment and destinations visitors. I am also um, in addition to that, a, a small business owner. I run a small micro eco adventure tour business on the Mornington Peninsula called Wild Adventures Melbourne. And after 20 or so years working in the tourism industry across many countries, I wanted to set up a business that was a force for good and was part of the solution rather than part of any issues. And therefore I built the foundations of WAM to have a positive impact in many different areas. Throughout this webinar series, I'll be sharing um, examples of that, but I also understand the pressures of a small business, um, tourism business here in Australia, that uh, I'm sure a lot of people on this call um, also experience too. From, from Austrade, it's critical for the future viability of the industry that we take action on sustainability now. More than that, it is the right thing to do. It is important to our reputation and cred credibility that Australian tourism businesses play their part in reducing carbon emissions and protecting and preserving our culture and the environment. You, everyone on this call has customers to serve, employees to train and supervise. We understand that making changes to embrace sustainability can be time consuming and difficult. And that's where we hope this sustainable tourism toolkit uh, will come in. So today's webinar, there's four um, webinars in this series. Today's webinar is on chapter one, which is taking a managed approach. The second live webinar takes place on the 2nd of May on Thursday, where we uh, go through environmental and climate action. The third webinar is on respecting culture, which takes place on the 9th of May. And then the um, fourth webinar covers chapter four and five, creating a positive social impact and promoting your sustainability story. And that takes place on the 15th of May. All of these webinars will be recorded, but we highly encourage you to join them live to get as much out of them as possible and to be able to interact on the chat too. So today's webinar, we're going to be going through an overview of the Sustainable Tourism Toolkit. We're going to be talking a little bit about why to embrace sustainability. We're going to be talk unpacking the um, chapter one of the toolkit, taking a managed approach, and then um, giving some ideas of taking action in your business. Before we keep going, we're just going to do a quick poll. So you'll see a QR code on your screen from there. And if you scan that QR code with your phone, it will bring up a poll from there. And that question is asking, how confident do you currently feel taking action on sustainability? 
So it'd be great if you could take part in that by scanning that QR code. And the question will be, how confident do you currently feel taking action on sustainability? It's just a multiple choice um, box to tick from there. And Brooke, if you can give me an indication that um, those answers are coming in. Coming through all well, Nick, no worries. And it's looking like it's, um, we've got about 70 in and we've got, probably most people are fairly confident, um, slightly confident and somewhat confident. So yeah, all good. So thank you everyone for that. Back to you. Thank you so much. And it's great to see a real spectrum of um, different businesses and um, mindsets that are on the call today. And I guess that's what this toolkit's all about, is that it can really benefit every type of business, no matter where you are on the sustainability uh, journey. So let's do a bit of an overview of the sustainable toolkit and where we are at the moment. So as you are probably aware, there have been there was the Thrive 2030, the National Tourism Strategy that um, is out. The towards the end of last year, the National Sustainability Framework for the Visitor Economy came out, and this set up the National Sustainability Vision and Priorities. The framework's goals have also been endorsed alongside the vision, and the vision is what the framework shares on there. And that is that um, Australia to become a global leader in sustainable tourism and that vision has been agreed and endorsed across all states and territories so we had the thrive 2030 strategy then we had the framework come out and now we've got the sustainable tourism toolkit and the sustainable tourism toolkit is the how is how to implement those practices into your business into a tourism operator point of view and the toolkit is part of a training activation program to help the industry become more sustainable. It's a joint Austrade Tourism Australia and uh, State Tourism Office uh, initiative. And the toolkit is a national resources for all businesses. However, there may be some great additional sustainability resources available from each of these organizations. And there's links in the toolkit to some of those resources. So let's have a look at the toolkit. What is the toolkit? The toolkit, um, there are a few uh, options to, to utilize it. So there is a, a PDF version, a more detailed uh, document, which is really, really useful to use. And there's also an online version, which helps to um, go through and find and discover various other resources relating to the toolkit as well. We encourage, um, downloading that the pdf of the sustainable tourism toolkit it is the why the what and the how it's a detailed version and it um and then there's a shorter online bite size version brooke's going to be sharing the link to the the toolkit um in case you haven't checked it out or read it yet all done thanks nick thank you so there's five um, chapters in this toolkit that we mentioned um, that we're going to be going through today. And to give you an example of how um, the toolkit is, is structured, this gives an idea of it. So the toolkit sets out practical advice, guidance and actions your business can take to improve your practices across the four pillars of sustainability. A key tip is that you can dip in and out of the toolkit. You certainly don't have to read it cover to cover. Use the toolkit as like you were using a toolbox. So there's many tools in there for you to pick and choose as needed and made for all levels of business, um, especially from beginners to advance. So under each pillar, you will find uh, an introduction to why the topic is important part of sustainability and the benefits your business can gain from taking action top tips on actions to take, key terms to familiarize yourself um, with and commonly use words and phrases, links in there to sources for further advice, tools and templates. At the end of each of the uh, pillars, there's also first step actions to start you on your sustainability journey and then next step actions offering more advanced and best pra practice advice to take you further on your sustainability journey. Throughout the toolkit as well, there's some 
super useful additional resources. So there's the appendix uh, resources in there, such as uh, an energy, water and waste tracker, which you uh, businesses can use to start tracking those different areas. There's also a glossary of terms to explain all the terms mentioned throughout the toolkit too. One thing to really remember is that the toolkit is here to support you with practical tips and advice to progress sustainability actions in your business. I found as a as a small business and um, owner that is very much on this journey as already in sustainability that the toolkit really helped me uh, provide additional ideas, resources and information that really helped me uh, refine my approach. It's bite sized inspiration. Um, and as we say, a national endorsement from there. So a question you may be asking is why embrace sustainability? And this is um, a really important question to answer. This is a quote from the UN World Tourism Organization that says tourism is a significant contributor to global emissions. And at the same time, the tourism sector is highly vulnerable to climate change. Here in Australia, one of the countries that is um, extremely vulnerable to climate change, as we would have seen in the news with various things from floods to bushfires, uh, droughts going on over the last few years. And as an industry, it's about us connecting the dots, no matter how small we are, no matter how big we are. There's over 300,000 tourism businesses in Australia. And so we can all collectively make a huge difference by taking action on sustainability. A really good example of a um, business that's taken and connected those dots that we're part of this, this bigger tourism sector that, that is contributing to climate change, um, Zoos Victoria. So Zoos Victoria, their tagline is, or their mission is fighting extinction. And they've realized that climate change is causing extinction. So unless they took action on climate change, they weren't gonna be um, you know, fulfilling their mission of fighting extinction from there. And they became the world's first carbon neutral zoo. If you head onto their website, they've got some really great visuals in the, in the way that they communicated it really beautifully about how they're tackling climate change, which helps them uh, fight extinction too. And the benefits of embracing sustainability will help your business to respond to changing customer expectations, reduce your carbon footprint, enhance your reputation and potentially give you a competitive advantage. In ways it can improve profitability and reduce costs, can, can adapt and increase resilience to climate change and build staff satisf satisfaction and appeal to potential employees. So I'm gonna give some examples of how that can happen from there. So what we do know is that the customer or the traveler's expectations and wants and needs are changing. And each year there's various different sustainability reports that come out. And these reports show, uh, this is from booking.com and their sustainable travel report of 2023 said that 74% of travelers are looking for more sustainable options. And that, that figure um, is increasing more and more. So the chances are that travelers are coming to Australia and they're looking for these more sustainable options. And therefore we have a great opportunity to be uh, one of those options that they may consider from there. Booking.com just released their 2024 report, but the results haven't been um, completely publicized yet. Um, but uh, be interesting to see what that is. On the flip side of that, seven in 10 travelers have actively avoided an experience or destination, questioning its green claims. So this could be, um, you know, if a business isn't taking as much action on sustainability as a traveler is expecting or wanting or looking for, then that can have a detrimental effect to your business as well. So really, really important to um, take action and meet that customer need. It can also provide a more enriching visitor experience. So this is Gemtree Wines in McLaren Vale in South Australia, who are a winery with a cellar door but they're much more than that now. They've in, infused their purpose-driven practices into experiences on their site as well. So they have cultural experiences tours, they have an eco trail people can go along, they can hire e-bikes, there's a off-grid accommodation that they can stay in as well. Customers start seeking them out because they're, they're, they're using these great experiences that are having a positive impact to enhance their product experience too. Likewise, um, it can help attract new customers. So Moores Hill Winery in Tasmania have found that they've got visitors choosing to visit their winery and 
and buy their solar powered wine because their winery is off grid. They've found that it has become a point of difference for them in a crowded market. So taking action on sustainability for them has helped them attract new customers and um, set them apart from the crowd. It can also be a great way to help your business become more marketable. That can be media with trade and national, state and regional tourism organisations too. So this is uh, Tourism Australia, who's done various different stories on sustainable travel experiences in Australia. And they're actively seeking products that are, you know, really doing some amazing stuff in sustainability. And therefore you can be um, featured and elevated and uh, become part of those stories um, just by taking action too. And of course, it's about contributing to the care of the community and environment your business operates in. So taking action on sustainability can be infused into your experiences and make a positive difference in that way. Sydney by Kayak offer um, cleanup paddles where people go on to the iconic Sydney Harbour, but at the same time, clean it up and uh, clean up rubbish and give back at the same time as well. So it can be um, an amazing way to give back to your local community and environment too. What we have found at the Tourism Collective delivering workshops across Australia is that operators are all on different stages of the journey. Some might not be sure where they're at. Some might be doing some eco practices, but want to do a lot more. Some um, want to be more sustainable, but haven't got the time or the budget. Um, some are sort of feeling like they're doing enough already um, or they potentially haven't started yet but want to be on the start of their sustainable journey. So wherever business is at, one thing that we're, you know, this toolkit really helps you to do is continuous improvement. So it's about um, not doing a tick box with sustainability actions but saying, we're gonna continue improving. There's always uh, lots of things to improve. So my business, Wild Adventures Melbourne, there's always things that I'm looking to improve and always things I've got on the horizon of looking to improve. So wherever you are, whatever stage you are at in your sustainability journey, this toolkit can help you um, continue that process and um, implement some great sustainable actions too. I guess the journey never ends. So in chapter one, we talk about taking a managed approach. So let's dive into that and some specific priorities and ideas for you to take action in your business. This chapter is all about how to be organized and plan to prioritize actions within your business and setting realistic goals, which you can then measure, track and take action on. So there's um, some key priorities that you, that you can see on the screen there, everything from embedding sustainability principles and practices, to right through to communicating sustainability actions and performance too. So taking a managed approach is, is almost like um, getting all your ducks in a row, getting organized, getting everything set up and setting yourself on the right path for sustainable success ultimately. So why take a managed approach to sustainability? Well, taking a managed approach to sustainability ensures your actions are not random and ad hoc, but are aligned with a consistent and well-structured strategy that adds value to your business. Ultimately, it helps plan and prioritize action in your business, helps, that, uh, helps with setting realistic goals and helps you to measure, track and take action in your business. One of the really important first steps to take is making a commitment to sustainability. It can be a statement, a commitment or policy that signals that you are taking action to improve sustainability. So your journey to become more sustainable starts with, with that and signals um, your intent. Consider including the following in your statement. So an overview of your business, how including your plans you are looking to improve, how you're looking to improve environmental, community, culture, and how you're looking to continue and improve those areas. Make your sustainability commitment easy to find. So that could be in your website, that could be in your vehicle, that could be in your venue, and it doesn't have to be set in stone as well. A commitment is what you're looking to do today, but that commitment might change. So it's something that, that can be changed over time. The example on your screen is by Green Olive, which is a beautiful restaurant and farm here on the Mornington Peninsula, who have that statement on their website of the, of the different actions they're taking to tackle water, waste, renewable energies, 
and um, biodiversity as well. So they, they communicate that really well on their commitment. There's some examples in the toolkit on page 11 of what a sustainability commitment can be worded like too. So worth uh, taking a look at that and what that looks like. Measuring to uh, manage your impact is something that's really, really important. So even if you're not planning to make any changes yet, such as solar panel power on your business, it's a great starting point to starting to, to manage um, and measure what's going on in your business to help you better understand your performance across the different areas of your business, allowing you to set meaningful targets and examples and track how you are going. So measuring your impact leads to targeted sustainability actions, cost savings, and ability to monitor progress as well. This is an example from Bright Brewery in the high country in Victoria, who are, you know, who, who, who power their brewery with, with solar or at least some of their brewery. On their website, they have a live energy consumption tracker. So on this, on the tracker from there, you can see the energy they're using compared to the energy they're generating from renewable energy. This is a really great way to be transparent, um, communicating to the customer of this is what we're doing, this is the energy we're producing, this is the, the energy that we're using, this is what we need to do, and really um, you know, being transparent with the customer um, and stakeholders of this is and community of this is exactly what we're, we're looking to do. So they're, they're measuring it, but they're also communicating it in a really great way. So start considering the environmental measures and the resources your business uses. So think about the following when it comes to the resources your business uses. So this could be energy. So review your energy bills and monitor the, the fuel used by your business vehicles. Um, look at the water, review your water bills to assess the volume of water your business is using. And then look at waste, monitor the volume of waste sent to landfill, recycled or composted. There's actually um, in the toolkit an energy, water and waste tracker template, which can be used to help monitor your resource. So this um, on Appendix 1 in the toolkit, there's an energy tracker which you can start going uh, through and start measuring everything from there. Another really important thing to do is start calculating carbon emissions. And there are a lot of carbon calculators out there. But rather than starting from scratch, it is well worth utilizing these carbon calculators or using the um, appendix, the energy tracker on there to start calculating your emissions. Carbon calculators can help save time. And there is a lot online um, to choose from. There's some that are free, there's some that are paid, there's some that you go through the process yourself, there's some that you have a support person working with you as well. So um, have a look through the, the toolkit and have a look through the different types of carbon calculators out there. And there may be an option that suits you right, is able to help you measure your emissions as a business and help you ultimately set goals to uh, improve in the future too. This is an example from Street Cafe, um, which is a Melbourne-based ca cafe as well, where they've actually calculated their emissions they have reduced through their waste reduction pr practices. So they've actually um, gone, you know, we're, we're decarbonizing um, by the waste, how we're tackling waste as well. And they've communicated that in a really great visual way. So reducing your emissions and calculating your emissions and then communicating what you're doing in those spaces can come across all sectors of, of energy waste and, and all areas like that too. Another area to consider is the social and economic factors that are important to your business. So as a starting point, these could include the number of volunteer hours that, that your staff or um, you have given to local clubs and charities, the number of local people you employ, uh, the hours of training that your staff complete each year, the proportion of supplies that you source locally. The measures of social impact template um, is in appendix two in the template, in the toolkit, sorry, and has a selection of measures to get you started. This is an example of Tasmanian Walking Co, who um, support community in a multifaceted way. So they do everything from supporting a scholarship in tourism at the University of Tasmania. They have a Tasmanian Aboriginal Guide training program. 
and they even tr support their staff and train up their staff in rescuing wildlife, which helps support a local wildlife sanctuary and wildlife hospital. So it's really um, important to kind of look at different ways to support those social um, and economic areas that with your within your business. A really important action to take is to develop your sustainability action plan, and it goes through this in the toolkit. But your this is going to be your roadmap for reducing your negative impacts and increasing your positive impacts. Identifying the actions that are important to you based on your data and business priorities, and this should include short and long term actions you are working towards. So developing your sustainability action plan um, will be your roadmap and helps you identify the actions that are important to your business. And as I say, includes short and long term actions. So you're going to be asking yourself, what are the actions you are taking? Who will lead them? Are you an owner operator and that will be yourself? Or is there someone in your team that you can empower to do that? The time frame that it will take to implement those actions and the financial resources required to achieve them. This is your positive impact roadmap. And there's a template in the online version of the toolkit that can be used to do this too. To help you get started with setting goals, the toolkit has a Word document template and Brooke's gonna share uh, a link to this to get you started with creating your own action plan and setting your own SMART goals. There's also a QR code that you can download uh, with the link there. The action plan can be downloaded from the online version of the toolkit um, and is a really useful way to, to get you started on that process. And one of the most important things to do is start setting yourself short, long and even longer term goals from there because change can be gradual and it is a process to doing that. So short term goals can be low hanging fruit as in quick, cheap or free sustainable changes in your business. That could be anything from switching out packaging you use to ethical packaging. Um, with Wham, that, that was the picnic boxes we used on our picnics. Um, you could be switching out bathroom products if you're an accommodation point to a more ethical option, uh, changing plastic bottled water to a tap water option, uh, sourcing local produce, that sort of thing. Things that you can change relatively quickly in your business. Short term goals are absolutely great because they set you on a path to success, set you on that, that road to sustainability and um, gives you progress along the way too. Longer term goals are actions which may take longer to implement and require investment. And that investment might require um, various from come from somewhere that, that you're not actually sure where that's coming from at the moment, but there's no harm in setting that goal. So that can be anything from solar to electric vehicles to composting to conservation long term projects that you're going to support to even certifications um, that you're looking to implement across your business as well. So, for example, for Wild Adventures Melbourne, one of our long term goals is having an electric uh, passenger vehicle. But, you know, one of that size and budget wise is not something that we can get at the moment, but there's no harm in still having that. As you progress your goals and you achieve your goals, celebrate and communicate. So if you're achieving some of those short term goals, um, such as switching out bathroom products or something, communicate it. Let your customers know what you're doing. Along the way, some of those goals might turn out to be harder to achieve. So identify what went, went wrong and then review your sustainability commitment. And if you need to change that sustainability commitment, that's completely fine too. Really important to look at um, what to look at future generations as well. So setting longer term goals is an opportunity to think about your your kids, your grandkids, future generations and what that means to the places we are custodians for. So in 100 years time, what does your business look like? And I love this, this mindset because it starts looking beyond us. I have a two year old daughter and she's my daily inspiration to, to provide um, an environment and a community that's, that's healthier for her in the future as well. And hopefully it's even as a micro business owner, I can contribute towards doing that. But looking longer term than that is a great way to set yourself targets and really um, you know, strive for for really progressive uh, environmental and social goals. At Wild Adventures Melbourne, we created this impact plan and promise on our website. So you can see this on our website and I'm just trying to be as transparent as possible. We're saying, this is what we're doing. 
This is what we're doing behind the scenes. These are the impacts that we've had. These are our 2030 goals. This is who we're supporting. It also helps hold myself accountable as a small business owner of saying, showing on our customers on our website, this is what we're looking to do, but also saying we're actually committing to this as well. We also release a impact report every year showing those different successes and kind of celebrating the things that we've achieved and again just being transparent along the way. Operating a sustainable business includes following national, state and local laws. So laws can often change and evolve over time, such as the use of single use plastics. So make sure you stay up to date with the requirements for your business. Laws will differ to your location, but some to consider include false and misleading uh, statements in communications. This can even uh, link into things like greenwashing and things like that, making uh, environmental claims which aren't accurate or true, um, data protection, permit requirements in ecology, uh, ecologically sensitive areas, waste management practices, uh, biodiversity protection and management, anti-discrimination, fair work and modern slavery, and workplace health and safety. So just something really, really important to be aware of. So after you've made your progress in, in implementing sustainability practices, you may consider undertaking formal training or seeking formal recognition by getting accredited or certified. And there's lots of options um, out there of what you can potentially do. But these can increase your credibility and trust, give you competitive advantage, improve operational efficiency by giving you a framework and, and a plan and encouraging in continuous improvement in your business. So there's tourism specific ones, which I'm sure many of you would be familiar with. So Ecotourism Australia becoming certified there, EarthCheck, which is a more international certification and the, the Sustainable Tourism Accredited Business through the Quality Tourism Framework. There's then all business ones, such as becoming a certified B Corp. WAM, the business I own on the Mornington Peninsula is a certified B Corp. And these are businesses across the world from all different industries, which are meeting some of the um, world's highest standards of environmental and social performance, accountability and transparency too. Again, can be a, a consideration to do. And then there's business or um, area specific ones as well, such as neighbours and the, the building um, efficiency of, of a building um, can be another consideration to get from there. To help choose a program that best meets your business needs. Think about the following. Is your program credible? Is it reviewed regularly? Does it encourage continuous improvement and offer a holistic approach to sustainability? Does the program include audit requirements? So does it come back and ask you what you're doing and that continuous uh, improvement too? And what is the cost, a real consideration are the costs one-off or ongoing? Does the cost represent good value for your business? Do you have the budget for that cost? Is that gonna be one that you're gonna go for? And then look at other businesses who are participating in the program. Are there lots of similar businesses to yours that are doing it too? Another area is like the UN Sustainable Development Goals. These are 17 goals that your business can take action on. That could be a free way that your business can align to sustainability actions and communicate that you're taking actions on those different areas. So you may have seen on the on the WAM Im, impact plan and promise um, that's on our website is there's the different sustainability goals along the bottom bar of that, the ones that we're taking action on and, and directly link to our business of what we're doing. So let's look at taking um, action in your business. And I guess this is one of the most important points to make is we completely get uh, where the industry is at and you know it's so hard running a business sometimes and keeping everything going so it's sometimes an approach of progress over perfection there's no business in the world that is doing this perfectly and so making those short-term goals making those um, small steps along the way is just continuous improvement and continually getting there so we're going to be bringing our thinking and training to support um, industry with these challenges when when delivering um, these different webinars and giving you ideas of, of how to progress across the business and using the toolkit to do that. But who can be the sustainability champion in your business? So who is, if you're running a business and there's, there's staff that are really passionate about this area, who can be the sustainability champion to drive 
your business forward? How can you keep putting it on the agenda, part of team meetings and plannings? And also, who can you partner with to help your business progress your action plan? So think about within your business and also suppliers outside your business who you can potentially uh, partner with. I found with Wild Adventures Melbourne that um, being a, a positive impact business and becoming a B Corp, I met all of these social entrepreneurs from all of these different industries who had a similar ethos towards uh, business. And that really helped me uh, drive outcomes as a tourism business, even though I was looking for industries and partners outside of it. So your next steps, work through the first and next steps in the toolkit for taking a managed approach. The link to the toolkit, as a reminder, is in the chat box from there. Download the sustainability action plan template from the toolkit. Um, again, Brooke has added a link in for that. Measure and record your baseline. Um, there's templates and examples in the toolkit. Really, really important to set short, medium and long term positive impact goals for your business. And make a note that, um, that webinar two, three and four in this series will really help you refine these goals. Um, it'd be great if you could set a single goal from today. If you do have a goal that you want to share, like a, a short term or uh, or anything like that, or a longer term, then please add that to the, the chat box of any goals that you are potentially looking to take place um, from today. And then finally, get recognized for your achievements through accreditations and certifications. So look at the different ones available, use the toolkit to help guide you there and um, see which accreditations and certifications. Many on this call may have um, done these ones already, but there may be others that you're looking to get through. It's not about getting every type of certification out there. It's about getting the ones that is best suited to your business. There's a QR code to download and share the, uh, the toolkit. Um, so please use that tool, that QR code. And as we say, the PDF version of the toolkit is the, a really great resource to start going through and start um, looking at how your business applies to those different areas. So Brooke, um, has there been any, any chat in there of uh, some short term or longer term goals from different businesses or has there any questions that have come through? I'm going to pop my camera back on now too. Thanks Nick. Yes, look, we would love to hear um, any goals that Nick just mentioned before. Please pop them in the questions box um, and I'd love to share a couple with the participants that are on today, if that's possible. Or any other questions? Um, Nick, we've had some lovely feedback just to say the, the examples that have been used have been great. Um, also, Nick, do you want to share, I guess, some of your um, your short-term goals or long-term goals that you've had for WAM or in your previous experience? Yeah, I, I found that um, especially environmental goals and things like that, I, I wanted to set some real targets. So looking long term into the future, I, I started um, refining our approach and setting goals to um, support conservation projects and social projects on land, in the ocean and First Nations projects as well. And I found looking longer term on those goals really helped us um, set some quite I guess, ambitious targets, but also some that we were committing ourselves um, to as well. So, for example, every year on the Mornington Peninsula here, we sponsor uh, a, a tree planting and revegetation um, project, which is called the Mornington Peninsula Koala Conservation. And we're looking to plant uh, enough uh, trees and revegetate enough sites to span from one end of the peninsula to the other by the year 2030. So it's just going, this is what we're doing, but um, we also link that to our customers. So then we're planting trees with every guest we're going, every guest that joins a tour with us, we're pointing out those local projects that we're supporting. So um, that's just an example from, a, I guess, an environmental uh, conservation point of view as well. But um, that, that's how we kind of look to the future and set some of those goals too. Um, it's great to hear that people are, are enjoying their case studies. Please note that webinar two, three and four, it's all about bringing the toolkit to life uh, across those three webinars and showing how different elements of that toolkit have been applied 
by a business um, in certain ways as well. So um, if you've enjoyed seeing examples of, of those case studies and how businesses are doing it, then webinar two, three and four um, would be great to join and, and see across the other three pillars. Thank you, Nick. Um, we have got a goal from Felicity who is looking to get off gas and get an EV charger set up for guests to use, which is um, really great to hear. And if you have anything else further to add on that question, Nick? Yeah, and that and that can be, uh, we, we've got people on the call today, I'm sure, from all different states and territories in Australia and things. And, you know, there may be grants available in certain states that aren't available in other states to implement different um, renewable infrastructure, such as the 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 comment just them about um coming off gas and putting in uh, ev charges and things like that as well but sometimes they're not um available everywhere and so it's just kind of keeping an eye out for them and seeing what what options are are, are available to do that and as we say before progress not per perfection so it may be um a case of um you mentioned before about coming off gas and all of that you know that could be something that you communicate with your customers that these are your plans to do but you're not quite there yet as well so it's, again it's kind of committing to it but saying you know when we're, we're not able to do this exactly right now but we have plans to do so and that shows to a customer that um you know you've really got that sort of um force for good positive impact type mindset and you're you're looking to do good things um even if you haven't quite achieved them straight away it's about saying these are our plans to do these Fantastic. Thanks, Nick. Um, we've also got another couple of goals. Great to see them coming through. Thank you. Um, around permanent fencing, around water collection sites on farm, which is a fantastic one. Um, also, as a new business um, who's joined us online today, they've established a sustainability working group to set new goals and work towards them. Again, really fantastic to see, Nick. Absolutely love that. And that can, a working group with other businesses as well to set yourself on the way, that is a really great way to, um, you know, it, for myself as an owner operator business, and I'm sure a lot of businesses on here as well are, are very small. I think over 90% of tourism businesses in Australia have one to four staff. So sharing and collaborating with other businesses can help save a lot of time if, if one business has developed a, a plan that you can help provide you a template to, to do yourself, that can really, really help as well. So setting up that working group is a, is a fantastic way of doing that. And, you know, um, communicating and connecting with other types of purpose-driven businesses, as I mentioned before, um, in, your, in your community can be a really great way to do that. So for example, with WAM, we support a lot of um, small local businesses with the products we provide, such as uh, a reef safe sunscreen, which we give uh, all of our guests from a local business, but that uh, builds a connection and a collaboration, and that helps us share ideas with those businesses too. So um, look at both tourism and other industries as well to help inspire action in your business. Thank you, Nick. Um, and thank you to everyone who has shared their, their goals. Um, some have identified them as short-term goals and medium goals, which is also a really great step forward to your action plan. Um, and that's, that's all for today. Thanks, Nick. Beautiful. Thank you, Brooke. So um, we've just got a quick poll um, on here right now. So again, there's that QR code like you had before. So after attending today's webinar, how confident do you now feel to use the toolkit? to help your business plan a managed approach to sustainability. So just give you a few moments to scan that and put that one through. Results coming through, Nick. Looking fairly confident. Um, yep. Fairly confident, Nick. That is the that's the winner for today, which is great to see. Quite a, uh, quite a number are completely confident, um, but majority are fairly confident with what they've learnt today. Yeah, and that's that's great to hear. You know, th this pillar one or or the chapter one is just all about getting that that structure, all, all getting about set up in the right place and getting those plans in the right place of what a business to do. But we highly encourage you to join the next webinar and the rest of the webinars as well. So webinar two is coming up this Thursday, um, the 2nd of May, 
it's 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So those times may differ depending on what state uh, that you're in. But the webinar two um, is environmental and climate action. So then this is gonna really dive into that chapter and give some really practical examples. You, we, one of the questions before talked about a working group um, amongst the other tourism businesses that they're doing, but this um, can show what other tourism businesses are doing and bringing to life the toolkit actions as well. I found that the best way to understand the toolkit is to see how they're being the actions that are advised and the information that is in it is being implemented. So this is what these other webinars are about. So webinar two, we really hope you can join on Thursday and then webinar three and four of this four part series will follow um, from there as well. So please uh, share the invite, um, replay with friends and colleagues um, and hopefully that will benefit uh, yourself and them. And uh, yeah, we really hope you can make it live on Thursday so that you can um, interact and ask those questions that Brooke and I will be more than happy to answer to. Thank you so much um, for joining today. We really appreciate your time out of your busy days and businesses too. Um, please reach out if you've got any questions, but we really look forward to speaking to you um, in the near future on the next uh, webinar on this Thursday, the 2nd of May. Thank you.